If you've seen our History of Fox retrospective video, you know that the original space animal has a legendary representation in the Smash franchise. Fox's immense popularity in Smash games even prompted further representation of the Star Fox series, despite being one of Nintendo's more low-key first-party IPs. Melee's introduction to Falco established the Spacey's motif, with space animals from the Star Fox universe dominating the metagame. Brawl would tone down the Spacey's a bit, but also added a new and arguably more unique Star Fox rep, Wolf O'Donnell. In Star Fox, Wolf is Fox's rival and a reoccurring antagonist. His inclusion in Smash diversified the cast by adding another villain to the mix. In Brawl's competitive scene, Wolf was pretty solid. His excellent aerial mobility and meaty hitboxes would make him a threatening character on stage, but his susceptibility to chain grabs and edge guards kept him from climbing out of upper mid-tier. Kane consistently achieved excellent results in the Midwest with Wolf, and Seagull Joe took the character far in the late meta, placing 9th at Apex 2014. To this day, Wolf is arguably the most inexplicitly cut character from Smash 4. Ice Climbers were supposedly too difficult to run on 3DS or an 8-player Smash, and Snake always had this looming rights questionability. Wolf was just not there. With Roy, Mewtwo, and Lucas added as DLC, it seemed natural for Wolf to be next, but it wouldn't be until the next Smash game that this mercenary returned to the spotlight. Smash Ultimate delivered on the everyone is here promise, restoring Wolf's inclusion with a new and improved moveset. Wolf was instantly recognized as buff from his brawl iteration, but in the early meta, he wasn't thought to be more than a high tier. However, Zachary brought Wolf into prominence with his excellent performance at Genesis 6, and since then, many top players have picked up the character. With many players flip-flopping on the character, his true tier position is debatable. So for our question of the day, do you think Wolf is high tier or top tier? We'd love to hear your opinions in the comments, and stay tuned to hear our take. For detailed wolf guides and more, check out our website, ProGuides.com. We've got all sorts of resources from live classes where you can play with pros to course programs that break down the essentials. You can also take advantage of our InstaPro platform to get yourself a pro coach today. So, as mentioned, Wolf didn't get off to the hottest start in Ultimate, but Genesis 6 changed everything. Zachary had an amazing breakout performance. At that tournament, he went through K9, Light, and lost nail-bitingly close Game 5 sets to Void and the Buzz, earning himself a more than respectable 5th place. It wasn't just Zachary's incredible gameplay. Wolf was clearly more capable than most of us thought. Wolf's transcendent laser, active nair, and amazing air mobility gives him one of the best neutrals in Smash Ultimate. His fair, nair, and grab also start consistent early percent combos, allowing him to whiff punish and rack up plenty of early damage. Wolf also has some of the strongest average kill power on his entire moveset. Let's take a closer look at his strengths. Wolf has the 5th fastest airspeed in the game, and a decent aerial acceleration. Coupled with his fast fall speed, this leads Wolf to be one of the most maneuverable characters in the air. He can space his aerials effortlessly, adjusting his drift on a moment's notice. In conjunction with double jump feints, Wolf can be quite ambiguous with his aerial approaches, drifting towards an opponent, then drifting away only to land right in their face when they've let down their guard. Wolf's airspeed is so useful that it actually makes up for his run speed, which is borderline atrocious. He'll often close gaps in the air, as he has more control and flexibility there. Wolf's ground game isn't bad either just because his run speed is slow. In addition to a bunch of solid grounded attacks which we'll cover later, Wolf has a disproportionately fast initial dash. This makes his dash dance very useful, allowing him to move well on the ground in close proximity situations. Mobility aside, Wolf's aerial kit is among the best in the game. He'll rely on these moves for zoning, starting and extending combos, landing, killing, basically everything. Wolf's forward air is his primary spacing tool in the neutral. His claws are disjointed and have decent range, likely to beat out pretty much anything besides a sword. With its range and only 10 frames of landing lag, Fair is also very safe on shield, but it's on hit that this move's potential is unleashed. Wolf's Fair is an excellent combo starter in many percent ranges. At low percents, it can link into a grab, a tilt, or even another aerial to extend further. These additional extensions become increasingly viable closer to mid percent, where Wolf can connect a falling fair into another fair or a falling up air to link into more up airs. At higher percents, fair can even create kill confirms into back air, or in specific situations, a wolf flash. At frame 7, Fair is a solid out-of-shield option too. This move is just good at almost everything, and a large factor in Wolf being such an easy character to find big openings with. 
Wolf's Nair also has tons of utility. This move is active for a whopping 20 frames, making it very difficult to whiff punish. It has similar combo potential to Fair, but with less base knockback and a lower angle, creating more routes into grab, dash attack, and tech chases at higher percents. Nair is one of Wolf's main landing options due to its long-lasting hitboxes, and it's great for retreating out of shield too. This move is one of the most reliable tools for trapping the ledge, as it can safely cover multiple options and even kills at very high percents. Fair and Nair make up the majority of Wolf's aerial gameplay at top level, but his back air is insane when it comes into play. Wolf's back air is one of his go-to kill moves. All three of this move's hitboxes are strong, but the tip hit is one of the strongest back airs in the game. This option is extremely threatening in neutral, as Wolf can auto-cancel it out of a short hop. It's perhaps one of the most dangerous safe on whiff moves in the game. Wolf gets a lot done with his aerials in all situations, but he doesn't rely on them. On the ground, Wolf has plenty of safe and strong tools as well. His laser, even after the nerf, is among the best projectiles in the game. The laser itself is transcendent, meaning it won't lose out to any other hitbox and deals as much as 10 damage on hit. Even up close, this move has a bayonet hitbox that may let Wolf get away with shooting at an unsafe range. Laser lets Wolf control the pace of the game and apply pressure from a distance, but he's more than capable of boxing on the ground, too. When he needs a burst option to close distances faster than his mobility allows, Wolf's dash attack lunges very far and very fast. In addition to being one of the easiest dash attacks to cross up shields with, this move can start combos and even kills. In close quarters, Wolf's tilts are amazing too. His down tilt is a very safe option for pressuring shields, and his up tilt is a great anti-aerial move that kills around the same percents as his up smash. Forward tilt is probably Wolf's most useful ground option though. This move has enough range to be safe on shield if spaced well, and its disjoints make it great for close range whiff punishing and landing traps. Forward tilt is strong enough to close out stocks too, so it's another go-to ledge trapping tool. Wolf's grab game is above average as well. His down and up throws start consistent combos from low to mid percents, and his back throw is a decent kill throw near the ledge. Last but not least, Wolf has an amazing set of smash attacks. His forward smash is very strong, and has such little cooldown that it's almost safe to whiff. Down smash knockback was nerfed, but the sweet spot of this move is still incredibly strong, making it a great tech chase punish and two framing option. Up smash has a surprising amount of range on its first hit, so Wolf players will use this to punish average space moves at kill percents. It's also useful at ledge against large characters, potentially covering multiple options from one position. Undoubtedly, Wolf possesses many great strengths, but most of his best players have dropped him in competitive play. This can happen for many reasons, but addressing the character's weaknesses is a must. Although vastly improved since Brawl, Wolf still has a pretty vulnerable recovery. His up B, Fire Wolf, doesn't travel very far, so he'll need to either rely on side B or drift towards the stage before up Bing. This means that if you launch Wolf far enough away, he has few mix-ups before he gets closer to the ledge, so fast characters can go after him during this time. His side B, Wolf Flash, does have a strong spike hitbox, but this hitbox is only towards the end of the move, so trying to edge guard him up close presents little risk. The strong hitboxes of Wolf Flash are also so big that most counters can catch this move even while standing on the stage. Firewolf is much harder to edge guard, but still has a lot of startup during which key and edge guarders can prepare their hit. Wolf also tends to struggle and disadvantage. If he's launched far enough, his airspeed makes it very easy enough to land, but in tight situations, he gets comboed to bits with his laggy reflector as his only fast combo breaker. Even so, most top players place Wolf in top tier, with some even considering him a top 5 contender. Others, like Zachary, now consider him a character that may drop further, with many bad matchups being further optimized. Looking at the facts though, every top players who've used Wolf have performed quite well with him, and his local results remain strong in the hands of players like Charlie the King, Stocktaker69, Dexter, and even Brawl veteran Kane. Wolf remains a character with some of the strongest neutral and punish games in Smash Ultimate, and his fundamental nature makes him a pick that top players can put their potential into. His dropping representation leads to some questions as to his future, but we still think Wolf is a top tier. Will Wolf hold on to his spot or drop further down? Let us know what you think, and be sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and click that bell to stay tuned for what we've got next.